The aim of this exercise is to learn how to set up a network analysis project including MIMO. We will define the MIMO characteristics at the transmitter. We will first run the propagation analysis which is where the actual ray tracing will be done and then as a post processing step we will run the network analysis and inspect relevant results. We will use the IDB file provided with this training session to create a propagation project. The name of the database file is officebuilding.idb. Once you open Propagation Manager or ProMan from the launcher, you can click on File and click on New Project. From the first drop down menu, Select Network Planning based on Description File for Air Interface. Once you click on that, a new window should open up and then you can use the same file that is provided with this session material that is IEEE 802.11n.wst file which is the Air Interface model for that protocol. Once you select the file, the name of the file will appear as shown in the screen. From the scenario context menu, select indoor scenarios. To add the 3D indoor building database or vector database, click on select and then browse and select office building.idb. When you load the file, click on OK. From the window, I will select North America and click on OK. The, the display height can be defined as 1.5 meters and then you can click OK to load the database into ProMan. You can now click on 3D view to observe the database. Let's first go to file and save project as. We can name this as IEEE 802.11n. Click on save. We can now go to project, edit project parameters and we see that OFDM, SOFDMA and duplex settings are TDD and MIMO 4 streams are already selected for the chosen air interface model. The minimum required signal to noise ratio is already set to 2 dB you can change if you want. Now we can click on mobile, sa mobile station subscriber station and set the maximum transmit power of the transmitter of the mobile station to 20 dB. We can now move on to the simulation tab. From the drop down menu, select individual for each transmitter. We can set the resolution to 0 0.5 meters. The prediction height that is relative to ground can be set to 1.5 meters. The type of network simulation is static simulation. We can now go to the sites tab and click on sites under initial properties of new object. Enter 10.29, 23.2 and 2.5 for X, Y and Z coordinates. So the X coordinate can be 10.29, the Y coordinate is 23.2 and the Z coordinate is 2.5. Click on OK. 
Now we click on add to add a transmitter or to add a site. Select site with sectors and omni site which is by default selected. Click on OK and the site window comes up with the previously defined initial location. We will now add multiple transmitters to this site or multiple antennas to this site. Please note that antenna 1 is already added by default. Double click on the predefined antenna. We will rename this as site 1 antenna 1. We shall verify that the location is 10.29 meters for x coordinate, 23.2 for y coordinate and 2.5 meters that is the height. Next we click on assign carrier and double click on the first one in the frequency downlink list that is 2412 megahertz. We set the maximum transmit power to 5 dBm. The transmitted signal group A should be for MIMO stream 1. Once these settings are defined, we click on OK. We click on OK again and then click on OK again. This will complete defining our antenna 1 which is at the site 1. We can now click on add to add all the other antennas at different locations that is with different x coordinates and in all we will have four antennas for a 4 by 4 MIMO. So let's change the location of the second antenna. I can rename this as site 1 antenna 2. The x coordinate can be changed to 10.35 meters. We can assign the carrier for the same frequency, change it to 5 millidB, assign the signal to signal group A and assign it to MIMO stream 2. Click on OK, click on OK and then click on OK again. So I have now defined four antennas on the same site with same or similar properties but different x coordinates as you can see over here. I have assigned each of these transmitting signals to signal group A and then selecting MIMO stream 1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively. Once the site is set up, we can click on OK and we will see that site 1 is defined under the sites tab. Next, we can go to the simulation tab, verify the, the information that we have selected and move on to propagation tab. We can name a directory to save the network and propagation results on the top over here. I will just leave it as default. Select all the output quantities that you want. If you notice that received power is by default selected. We can click on field strength and path loss or any, or any other uh, results that you want to select. We can now also move to the network tab and select all the 
outputs that you want to request. We can now move on to the computation tab and select dominant path model as the propagation model that will be used to solve this indoor scenario and click on OK. We will see that the site with its location is defined with multiple antennas. We shall first run the propagation analysis. So we shall go to File, Save Project, then go to the Computation tab and click on Propagation Analysis. The results from the propagation are available for all the antennas on the left hand side. We see the path loss, the power and the field strength for the individual antennas. The simulation is extremely fast and the results are same because the transmitters are placed very close to each other. The propagation results are results calculated individually for each transmitter. Next, we will run the network analysis and go to the same computation tab and select Network Simulation Compute All. The simulation once again is very fast as this is a post-processing step which uses results from the propagation analysis. Once the network, network analysis is complete, we can look at results like cell area as shown. To get a better resolution of the image, I will rerun this problem with a slightly finer resolution. After rerunning the simulation with 0 0.01 meter resolution, I see continuous plots as you can see on the screen. We can now analyze the results by looking at the signal area, the cell area. We can also look at the maximum data rate that is available on different locations. We can look at the throughput. One can also look at the downlink signal to noise and interference ratio in DB. Users can also look at results for individual transmission mode. As you can see over here, I have selected one. You can also look at results from all the other transmission modes that are calculated over here. So this is how a user can perform propagation analysis and network planning in an indoor scenario using multiple propagation models.